Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Uh, I'm absolutely thrilled to be in Lyon and to have an opportunity to talk to you about something that I'm incredibly passionate about myself, and that's our responsibility as contributors and as leaders to the global open source community. So with that, let's get started. Let me get my clicker working. Okay. I think this crowd, uh, among any other, would understand that like, the world is powered by software, right? It touches every aspect of our lives, from our phones to the planes that we flew here in, to the cars that we drive, uh, and that most software today is built on open source. In fact, 99% of software projects are built on open source. I don't think that that will surprise anybody here, but I've been in open source for over 15 years, and I don't think I really understood what that meant until I dug a little bit further into the numbers. So that's what I'm gonna start with here today. When you import an open source library into your project, you're not just adding code. You're essentially adding a team of developers to your project. You're giving them commit access to your code. But with that, you get to benefit from the ongoing work that they do to improve the libraries that your software is depending on. This is the reality of building on open source. I think a lot of people still have this image of the solo developer, you know, the Lone Ranger toiling away in a dark room. Maybe you slide pizza, or since we're in France, some crepes under the door, and out comes you know, incredible software. But in reality, we are this interconnected community of developers. Software development, whether you're doing it you know, alone in a room at home or in a company, is deeply collaborative. And this morning, I'm going to tell you a story about how thousands of software developers came together to create a major scientific breakthrough. Hopefully, you've all seen this picture by now. I think it's the photo seen around the world. It's the first ever picture of a black hole. Now, scientists had theorized about black holes for years, but we didn't have any telescopes that were powerful enough to see them, and that's because they're incredibly far away. This particular black hole is in a galaxy called M87, over 55 million light years away from us here today. And so it took scientists years and a network of telescopes all around the world to collect data that then it took years to process to actually produce this image. And while this is an incredibly cool image and an important scientific moment, I think this is my favorite picture from that. Hopefully you've seen this all as well. It's incredibly iconic. And this is Dr. Katie Bauman, one of the lead researchers and scientists on the project. I think we all can identify with this moment. It's the moment where you finally get your code to pass all the tests. Or if you're in marketing, when you see your designs come to life for the first time. It's that moment of pure joy. This project had hundreds of people around the world on the core team working with Katie to make this moment a reality. But there were many other people that contributed to the open source projects on when it was built. If you didn't know, it was built on Python, and there might even be people in the audience today here who worked on some of the projects that made the Event Horizon project possible. We dug into the number of community contributors that it took to build all of the open source dependencies that were pulled in for Event Horizon, and the number is incredible. Over 21,000 people worked on the software that made that picture of a black hole possible. There's no other way to do this other than open source. The numbers are truly astonishing to me. 
So, you know, when we think about the projects that we work on, we often think just about the direct contributors. Who are the people that you're working with on a daily basis to bring your project to fruition? But there are really all these community contributors that can contribute to making it a success. So, you know, you see the 21,000 number from the Event Horizon project, and you know that it's built on Python, and I think it's easy to think, hey, Maybe that is some kind of an anomaly, right? Maybe it's just specific to that project. At GitHub, we're fortunate to have access to a lot of data about the world's developers. And so we decided to take a look at the top 1,000 open source projects on GitHub today and see how many people did it take, on average, to produce the top 1,000 open source projects. And the number is just incredible. 74,000 people. On average, that's not the total across all projects. 74,000 people uh, contribute on average to the top projects when you look at all of these community contributions. Um, for me, again, I've been in open source for most of my career. I would have never guessed that the number was that high. Um, this is bigger than the development teams at Google or Apple or Microsoft. In fact, it's bigger than the entire employee bases of the global Fortune 500. And that really is the power of open source. You could never get a team that big. And every time we develop open source software, we're standing on the shoulders of all of the work that these people have done uh, to create the open source libraries that we depend on. But where are they coming from? Again, at GitHub, we have access to a lot of developer data, and we produce a report every year called the State of the, Octav the Octaverse, excuse me, and publish it. The next one is coming out in just a few weeks. So this is the 2018 data. Um, but I can give you a sneak peek and tell you that the trends continue. And what I think is really cool is that uh, most open source contributions and the growth of open source is primarily happening outside of the US. In fact, 80% of all open source contributions today come from outside of the US. And you can see that it's growing more quickly as well. We've also broken this down on a country basis. And you'll see here, the top two markets for open source development outside of the US are actually China and India. And I know it looks like they're flatlining, but remember that this is a chart about growth. So these markets, although we have millions of developers in them, are continuing to grow faster than any others. It's about 30% year over year on average. We don't currently break out all the numbers, but what I can tell you is there are over 40 million developers on the GitHub platform today. So, of course, those markets represent millions of developers, each of them. I think charts are cool, but what really made this hit home for me was this image. This is based on real data for a month of contributions on GitHub. It's over 100 million contributions a month on the GitHub platform. And each of those little points of light represents one of those contributions. I have to say, I think it's pretty cool, and I was proud to work at GitHub before, but seeing this graphic uh, made me especially so. But what would happen if we lost part of that community. You can see these points of light are coming from virtually everywhere in the world. Uh, I think we all read the news and we know that uh, we live in increasingly difficult geopolitical times. Uh, for those of you especially who came from the US, you know uh, that there are some, some tough relationships in China right now between the US and China. And Chinese developers contribute to some of the most important open source projects that we use today. Of course, Linux is one of them, uh, but there are a number of others. And I would hate to see us lose access to all these incredible developers. Um, one of my favorite things about open source is the way that it enables us to meet and collaborate with people 
that we wouldn't have met otherwise. In fact, maybe some of you know this, but I met my husband through open source when we were living in totally different countries. And it's going to be our 11-year anniversary in a couple weeks. So happy anniversary, honey, wherever you are. Um, but I would have never met him with, without open source. Uh, and we all need to make sure that we work together to continue to maintain this glorious global open source uh, community that I know we're also happy to be a part of. At GitHub, we're working on this ourselves in a few different ways. Some of you might be familiar with the recent US trade sanctions, and a lot of companies just decided to geoblock access uh, to their products for Iran and Syria and Crimea. At GitHub, we decided to take a different approach. And we have left all of our open source or uh, publicly available open source repositories available to developers in those countries. And we're also working with policymakers to expand access to GitHub to developers in those places. We believe that access to GitHub and the global open source community is not only important for continued software development, but also for the free flow of information uh, with developers around the world. In China, we're actually investing in improving access to GitHub in China and working on building out a team there. Again, for those of you familiar with US politics, it's a challenging time to do that. But we feel it's our duty, and I think it's our duty as a group to make sure that we continue to build bridges with developers in places around the world. So I encourage you all to work with your policymakers, to make your voices heard, to make sure that we're all coming together to fight for developer freedom and access to the global open source community. And I also encourage you to make sure that you really understand the policies that are being put in place, and you're not afraid to push on the boundaries whenever possible, again, in the pursuit of developer freedom and access. We are more connected than ever before. And we need to make sure that we work together to keep it that way. Let's keep the lights on. Thank you. Thank you.